Two people were fatally shot following an argument between co-workers at the United States Postal Service in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in what authorities believe to be a murder-suicide. The incident occurred at around 10.26pm on the 30th of October at the USPS located at 6050 Shellerford Road. Police say that 27-year-old Brian Simmons got into a verbal dispute with his supervisor, 30-year-old Cody Ryan Ransom. Upset, Brian then fired multiple shots at Cody, killing him before fleeing the scene in his own vehicle. Brian was later found dead with a self-inflicted gunshot wound after he crashed into a nail salon business about six miles away, located at 5241 Highway 153 in Hickson. The police have not said what caused the argument between the victim and suspect. Friends and family said Cody had a heart of gold and was the kind of man that would do anything for anyone. He was an amazing father to two of his boys and a devoted husband to his wife of six years. All those that knew him and love him will surely miss Cody's smile, laughter and heart. A woman was fatally shot outside her workplace after repeatedly rejecting a co-worker's advances. The incident occurred just before 7am on the 24th of October, when 28-year-old Nicole Hammond arrived at work and exited a vehicle in the parking lot of Dubot Textile at 455 Lincoln Avenue in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Her co-worker, 36-year-old Michael Carpenter, shot her in the neck and she died at the scene. After hearing shots fired, witnesses saw Michael run to his car and drive away. Police tracked him down several hours later, hiding in a home in nearby Sork Rapids. The suspect was in possession of a handgun with a loaded magazine, which bullet smashed the casings found at the crime scene, and he was arrested on murder charges. Nicole texted Michael a day before she was killed, and insisted that she did not want to be touched or manipulated by him. Nicole had repeatedly rejected Michael's advances in the months leading up to a murder, asking him not to make things uncomfortable at work. Police found a text Nicole sent to a friend saying that Michael was mad at her. The harassment was evident among Nicole's colleagues, who said that Michael had a bad temper. Michael admitted to officers he was upset about Nicole's rejection the night before her death. The harassment, however, was never reported to their employer. CEO Rob Dubois said, unfortunately we had no idea, he said. Anytime there is anything that requires our intervention, we step in, but in this case, we had no indication there was anything awry. When talking to police, Michael admitted that he didn't sleep well the night before because the text argument with Nicole upset him. He also made several contradictory statements, but didn't admit to shooting her. He claims that he had been walking towards a car when he heard the gunshot. He told investigators that he ran away from the scene because he was too traumatized after seeing his love interest's body. He didn't render aid, go to work, nor did he call 911, police said. One of Nicole's supervisors, Savannah Townley, said she'll remember Nicole as a beautiful, smart, determined young woman. You deserve to live your best life, but instead you got your life taken away from you, she said. Our team is forever broken without you. Fly high, angel. Michael's held at the Benton County Jail, and he's charged with Nicole's murder. He found guilty. He faces up to 40 years behind bars. The investigation into the matter continues. Investigators are trying to determine who shot a Hartwell, Georgia man, whose body was dumped on a highway before being run over by two separate vehicles early this week. According to the Hart County Sheriff's Office, the authorities responded to a call during the pre-dawn hours of the 1st of November from a motorist to come across a body in the roadway of Bowman Highway. When officers arrived at the scene, they found the dead body of a man, later identified as 32-year-old Delfonso Heard of Hartwell. Investigators determined that Delfonso had been shot before being struck by two separate vehicles. Sheriff Mike Cleveland said he didn't know how the body ended up on the road or the types of vehicles involved in the incident. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation has been asked to assist in the case. No arrests have been made to date, and the circumstances behind the shooting are currently unclear. The authorities are investigating the fatal shooting of an 18-year-old cyclist in Grand Rapids, Michigan that happened earlier this week. The victim has been identified as Kane Coronado of White Cloud, Michigan. He would have turned 19 next week. Ken was shot in the neck while riding along Indy Mounds Drive in Hopewell Indy Mounds Park shortly before 3pm on the 1st of November. A bystander found Kane unresponsive and performed CPR on him 
until emergency responders arrived, but it was too late. Wyoming Department of Public Safety Lieutenant Rory Allen said that investigators are still trying to determine what happened out there. Rory said detectives don't know whether Kane was an intended target or if the shooting was random, saying it was too early in the investigation to say. We don't have all the facts of the case yet, he added. Police also didn't know what type of gun was used. Rory said he was not aware of any shell casings being recovered at the scene. Witnesses reported multiple shots being fired, Rory said. I don't have an exact number. We do know the victim was hit one time, he said. Investigators are looking for a light-coloured sedan. They were seen headed east on Indian Mounds just after the shooting. Rory said investigators don't know exactly how it was involved, but they want to speak to the people inside. Those close to Kane said he was out riding his bike, doing something he enjoyed, when he was shot and killed. They described him as a very kind young man that lived life to the fullest. Kane would do anything for anyone, including giving the shirt off his back. The investigation into the matter continues, 